I disappointed my grandmother and my priest. I felt like I'd let God down. I'm a failure. This Christmas just gone is the first time I've been to Christmas Mass since I was 16. Marilyn Ruliansic is finding peace in her new home, a quiet retreat in the Avon Valley east of Perth. It's a fresh chapter in a life marred by trauma and loss. Marilyn was just 15 when her mother found out she was pregnant. She hauled me out of high school by the hair, dragging me down the path, telling the headmaster I wouldn't be back. Such was the shame, Marilyn was taken to the Nagala Mothercraft home in Perth, which had a separate wing for unmarried mothers. She refused to sign her baby away for adoption, but was eventually given no choice, like tens of thousands of other young women across Australia between the 1940s and the early 1980s. Nagala, a home for unmarried mothers and unwanted children. What children weren't wanted? The children were our children. Marilyn's one of dozens of people who've told their stories to a parliamentary inquiry into forced adoption in Western Australia after a similar inquiry in Victoria. They strapped my legs up and, and they told me to stop crying because I was upsetting the other mothers. I had my baby. I asked what it was, if it was all right, and I was told I didn't need to know because it wasn't going to be mine anyway. It wasn't long before she began searching for the daughter she'd lost in a quest that spanned years. Newspaper adverts, poring over electoral rolls, eventually hiring a private detective. Until finally, a breakthrough and an audacious undercover operation. This is Marilyn's first ever photo with her daughter, Audra. I tracked down the photographer, Mama him and his wife, and they sat down and I told them the truth. I told them the whole story. They were both in tears <laughs> and um, agreed to let me pretend to go to the wedding as his assistant photographer. And I went up on the minstrels gallery in the, in the church. And I stood up there by myself and I watched my daughter get married. Did you ever think at any point, what am I doing here? No, no, I'd, I'd looked so hard for so long. My thought that day was, if this is all I'm ever going to get to see of my daughter, I have at least got this. I hadn't realised, but I'd never worn my hair up in a French roll. I tried to look different to what I normally do. Audra had a hair in exactly the same style as me, exactly. Mm -hmm. So Marilyn kept her presence at the wedding secret, not wanting to overshadow her daughter's big day. Her remarkable story is one piece of a much larger truth, which the parliamentary inquiry is trying to uncover. Charities, including the gala, where Marilyn was sent, are being held to account. We're really, really sorry for what they went through and what they're continuing to go through, because trauma doesn't stop. We are really sorry for the part that we played in, in the forced adoption era and we will work with them and, and with the government. <laughs> Today, Nagala is highly respected, a sanctuary for families in need of help. It's supported parents and children for over 130 years, but it concedes its history book doesn't adequately acknowledge the forced adoption era. There's no chapter on it. It's a chronological... The gala has pulled the book from circulation and is working to literally rewrite its history. In hindsight, do you think it was cruel? I think it was exceptionally cruel. Exceptionally cruel. Um, there's no, no ifs or buts about it as a mother. Um, and as a CEO of a parenting organisation, I can't think of anything more cruel than to take a child off its mother, or both. Nagala is now advocating for a government redress scheme that goes one step further than Victoria, which is the only state or territory offering compensation, but only to mothers and not to their children. 
forced adoptive people. The adoptive people need to be considered. They are experiencing that trauma um, and I think the government needs to redress them. It's a call Marilyn supports, but she also wants answers. We should know what went on and why. Why did they think that they could just remove a woman's child, just take it from the womb and give it to strangers? It took another two years after Audra's wedding for the mother and daughter to finally meet. They're now close, but it's been a difficult road coming to terms with the irreplaceable missing years. I lost every day, I lost every birthday, I lost it every Christmas for years and years and years. Please don't give us a verbal apology. I, I would cringe to hear another sorry that's not going to cut the mustard with us now. A plea for justice from the walking wounded. Claire Moody, ABC News.